Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to the Iowa Homeschool Mom channel. We are currently in the middle of a bird unit, so I just thought it'd be a good time to go ahead and come on here and show you guys what we've been up to. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so we're gonna start with arts and crafts. So with having a newborn in the house, we just kept things super simple this time around. And the first thing I have to share with you guys are these North American Songbird coloring pages. Now, our unit wasn't specific to North American birds, it was just birds in general. Uh, but we did kind of hone in on a few different North American birds. And these coloring pages are actually free on my blog, and I'll be sure to link them in the description box for you guys. Um, but each page has both the common name and the scientific name. And we have the American Goldfinch. We have a very colorful Blue Jay. The Red Winged Blackbird. The American Robin. And the Northern Cardinal. And then we also have this Dover Little Bird Stained Glass Coloring Book. And these are really cool. Um, these are of special paper and you can use crayons, felt tip pens, or paint to color them. And then you tape them on the windows and the, it's really cool to see the sunshine through them. And then at the back of the book there's also a key um, to which bird is on each page as well as a description of their coloring. And my daughter actually got a fairy one of these for her birthday, so she's been working on both the birds and the fairy ones lately. Right. Next, we just have this little wooden birdhouse. And I found these little wooden birdhouses at our local Dollar Tree. And you can usually find these little wooden items to paint. So um, be sure to just check at your local Dollar Tree the next time you're there. And the kids just love painting, so I thought this would be a really fun project for them. All right, and the last thing we have are these little binoculars, the little DIY binoculars. And we just used a couple rolls of um, toilet paper tubing and the kids painted them. And then after the paint was dry, we just stapled them together on each side, on the inside. And then I hole punched a, using a single hole punch on each side and then just uh, some string to make it a little, to, so they can carry it around their neck. And my daughter has been using these a lot. So, so that was a fun project. Okay, so next we have some games and activities to share with you guys. And the first one, that we have is this match of pair of birds and this is a classic memory game where you turn the cards upside down and you have to remember where the matching card is um, but with this one you match the male female the male bird and the female bird and this is so beautifully made you guys and we had such a great time playing this um, and it also comes with this little packet and it has all the different birds listed on it as well as just some information about them and how to tell the female and male apart or if they're um, so similar that it's really hard to tell them apart yeah so there's that one and then next we have bird bingo so this is another super fun one again beautifully illustrated my daughter has really been liking games lately so we've been trying to incorporate more in our home school um, but this comes with some red bingo chips and then it has a bunch of different playing cards And these are birds throughout the world, not just North America. So you have the playing cards, the bingo chips, 
And then you have this little bag that comes with the little matching uh, tokens to call out. I guess they're little call chips. And then you also have um, a really big board to mark off the ones that you've called. And this folds out. And then this one also comes with a little guide that has the rules and all the different birds in it along with some information about them. So you can read this as you go along. Um, we haven't been doing this a whole lot um, just because my kids are little. So we've just been working on identification mostly. Sometimes we'll pick out a few birds to read about. but. Mostly we've just been enjoying the game. So. so there's that one. Okay. And the last game is Hoot Owl Hoot. And this is a cooperative game made by Peaceable, Peaceable Kingdom. And they make such quality games. We love their games. And what's nice is that the directions are on the inside of the box so you don't ever lose them. So again, this is a cooperative game, so you have to work together in order to get all the little owlets back to their nest before the sun comes up. As you can see from the back here. So it's a really good game to work on colors and um, cooperative skills. I'll kind of just show you guys. So. There's all the little pieces in here, and then it's a very, very nice board. Man, we got a couple owls in there. <laughs> yeah, and there's different levels, so you can make it more challenging or more easy depending on uh, your child's uh, where your child's at. So there's that one. And then we just have some puzzles, and I got these ones from naturewatch.com. Um, we just have birds of North America, and then we have North American owls. And these are just some puzzles that my kids can do independently, or I can do them with them, and we can read more about the birds on the back and help them identify them. And I always try to have some puzzles because they're great for logic and again as an independent or work together activity. And then we also have this make your own bird call which we got from Nature Watch. I believe they have these on Amazon too if you prefer to go that route. Um, but this is a great activity that um, helps cover animal communication and a great way to talk to them about how animals communicate for courtship or alarming or fighting. Um, so we haven't done this yet, but this will be a really good one to do um, coming up. And then we just have some field guides that we've been using. And the first one we have is this Bandex one. And the kids have really been enjoying using this one and taking it along on our nature walks with us. And this just covers North American birds. And on the front, it just gives a little description about the bird as well as an image of the bird. And then on the back, you will see it also covers their habitat, their range, their diet, their nest, their eggs, and their conservation status. Yeah, so that's a fun one for the kids to take along. And then the next one we have is this um, field guide of Birds of Iowa. So I've been using this one. And this is just really nice to have a specific one to your area. So 
There. And then we have the Young Naturalist Field Guide um, with the Birds, Nests, and Eggs Take Along book. Um, honestly, we haven't been using this one a whole lot this time. We had the Trees, Leaves, and Seeds one in the fall, and we really enjoyed using that one, but we just haven't been gravitating towards this uh, Take Along book this time around. But it is a great resource. It covers um, the birds. Uh, their nests and their eggs and that also includes some activity ideas in here as well so make how to make a blind for bird watching uh, there's some other ones in here as well uh, make a hang down feeder and so on so there's that okay moving on to books so we've got quite the number of books here and we probably won't get to all of them, but that's perfectly okay. I just like to have options for my kids to choose from. And we're going to start with some of our favorite ones. So this one, The Little Book of Backyard Bird Songs, is my kids' absolute favorite. We don't have too many battery-operated books and toys in our house, but this is such a lovely book that I really don't mind if the kids push these buttons over and over again. We also like to sit on the front steps or the back porch and kind of listen to the birds outside and use this book to help identify them by their songs. And we've heard quite a few cardinals and blue jays, robins. Uh, we've even heard a morning dove. So this is just such a lovely resource for the kids. recommend. Then we have Spit Nest, Puke Power, and other brilliant bird adaptations. And what I like about this book is that it features many of the same species of birds as our bird bingo game that I showed you guys earlier. And just like the title states, it's all about bird adaptations such as adaptations for mating or for fighting off predators, catching prey, building nests, and so on. And I'd have to say that I think this one has been my favorite book so far. Then we have the Burgess Bird Book for Children. And this is a highly recommended first chapter book in the Charlotte Mason world. And it really is such a great book. It's written through the eyes of Peter Rabbit as he interacts with and observes species of birds and then he confides in Jenny Wren who's a wren um, about how the birds are related and just to learn more about particular species of birds so it's a great living book and there are pictures in it to help keep your kids attention but I like to use this book during lunchtime and read it aloud to the kids while they're eating and what's also nice is at the end of the book there's an index so if you wanted to read about a particular species of bird you could look up what pages and chapters they're featured in in the back yeah. right and then we have the big book of birds as well as the big sticker book of birds and these are great to do like if you just wanted to do a couple pages at a time and your child could just pick a page and then just um, read the different little parts that are featured on the page yeah and then my daughter has really been loving the big sticker book of birds and again you can do it's perfect for one or two or three pages at a time and that's been great because we've been able to sneak in a few pages while my baby is sleeping since he's still taking pretty short naps. Um, but there's lots of different activities in here as well for the kids to do, such as pre-riding and counting and obviously stickers and coloring. And then they just learn about 
different species of birds. And this isn't specific to North America. This is birds around the world. And while my daughter was doing, working on the pages, I would put on a little YouTube video for her about the bird as well while she was coloring. So she really enjoyed that as well. But yeah, so this has been my daughter's favorite one, or one of her favorite ones. And then we have, I wonder why penguins don't get cold and other questions about birds. And I just picked this one up at our local thrift store. And just like the title states, it's basically just a bunch of Q&As about birds. So how do birds fly? Why are vultures bald? And so on. And then we have a nest is noisy and an egg is quiet. And we really like all of the books in this series. Uh, we have A Butterfly is Patient and A Beetle is Shy. And we're planning on reading A Rock is Lively this summer. But these are just really beautifully illustrated books. And they're not specific to birds, which I actually really like that factor. Um, they also cover other animals like the American alligator and the platypus and the beaver and the dogfish and so on. But they do cover quite a few different species of birds as well. Again, they just have really beautiful illustrations and so much information in them as well. So these are really great books to check out or add to your homeschool library. And I'll give you a little look through this one. So again, really beautiful illustrations. Very informative. So these are really great books to check out or add to your homeschool library. All right, then we have United Tweets of America, 50 State Birds, and this is a really great book to add in a little bit of geography to your unit. Uh, we just went over, like, the state we live in and then some states that we either have relatives in or we visited, so. And then we have robins, how they grow up. And just like the title suggests, it basically goes through the life cycle of a robin. And I will say that if you have a really sensitive kiddo, this does feature nature and the unfortunate events of nature. So if your child is super sensitive, that's something to consider. But I really like the illustrations in this book. Okay, and then lastly, we just have the Penguins uh, Zoodles magazine that the kids get. They actually got it during our unit, so I just added it right in. All right, so that about covers everything I have. If you guys have done a bird unit in the past, I'd love to hear your favorite activities and books, so be sure to share those in the comments below. And if you guys are planning a bird unit, let me know what you're looking forward to the most. It's really nice to be able to get back into the swing of things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.